What is up, guys? Marcus here. Welcome to another video and a really cool video today. We're going to talk about how you can actually improve your flexibility, your movement by focusing on your eyes and your visual system. And I first want to address a really important point because that's actually one, I would say, like point of criticism that I oftentimes get when I talk about these things. And I get these critical comments usually from therapists, most of the times physiotherapists, because what they think is that I'm telling everyone, just focus on your eyes and all of your problems will be fixed. Like only your eyes are important for your mobility, which honestly, like it could be further from the truth. And for me, like when you've been to one of my courses or seminars or when you've worked with me, like you know that I have a very holistic approach to movement, to strength, to well-being, to mobility, to flexibility. And I think that's a, a really important thing to address first because a lot of the times people think that, you know, like the thing that I'm teaching people about neurotraining is that you can fix all of the issues by just, you know, like doing like, I don't know, like visual drills or vestibular drills. And like all of a sudden, all of the people are healed, which is uh, like, which couldn't be further from the truth. And um, that doesn't mean that the visual system is not important, which is actually the topic of today's video and the reason why I want to talk about it. Because like, I think a lot of people, and that's the problem a lot of the times in the fitness industry, they just think black and white. They just think it's A or it's B, but it's never in the middle. So for me, like the way I work is I always look at a lot of different systems in the body. So I look at the visual system, I look at the vestibular system. So I look at a lot of these like sensory input systems that we have in our body to actually move through the world, to actually perceive our environment. Like all of these different input systems will be critical for how safe the brain feels and how we actually move and perform. And so this is the first part that I look at when I when I talk about movement, but I also view things through a biomechanical lens because biomechanics, someone's bone structure, someone's body structure, someone's anatomy will be really important as well because it will just teach me, okay, like what is the strategy that someone uses to actually move through the world? So I look at things like the pelvis, the feet, the rib cage. Does someone walk more on the outside of the foot? Does someone walk more on the inside of the foot? Like little things that I actually look at that are also really important uh, when actually addressing someone's movement, pain, or performance. And the reason why I think a lot of people misunderstand that concept and the reason why a lot of people actually criticize some of the like neural work is because they think, yeah, like, um, who do you think you are that you just, that you're just able to improve someone's mobility by addressing the visual system. And like, I've, I know I've gotten so much like shit storm one time when I posted a reel where I said, improve your flexibility in 30 seconds um, by doing uh, like a, a vision drill. So I basically post it, um, test your range of motion, then do the neural drill and then retest your range of motion. And, you know, like while a lot of people were like, damn, this is crazy. Like I've improved my mobility by a ton. Like it's the first time I'm actually able to touch my toes. Like a lot of people loved the stuff that I was actually sharing, but there was also a lot of people that were like, yo, like this is bullshit. This doesn't work. This is just temporary, blah, 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 blah. And the most important thing to understand is that when I address someone's visual system, I'm just going to talk about the visual system for now. Of course, we can talk about all of the other like sensory input systems, but I'm specifically talking about vision right now. So the reason why it is so important to actually focus on the visual system when it comes to mobility and when it comes to movement is because the visual system is actually our most dominant sensory input system. So our visual system actually tells us everything that's happening around us and also what specific or like what potential dangers might be somewhere around here. Okay, so just for our brain from a, from a safety perspective, 
the visual system plays a really important role to actually like tell us, okay, like what's actually happening around us, which is really important. And anyone that actually had, let's say, an eye injury or something like that, they will know what I'm talking about. Because oftentimes I've worked with a lot of athletes that actually had, you know, like concussions or head injuries or also eye injuries. And the thing that I oftentimes get is that they just felt so anxious all the time because like the visual system just wasn't really like sending high quality signals to the brain. So that had also like this transfer over effect to the whole body, to the muscle tone, to how tense they felt, to how threatened they felt. And this can like logically also impact someone's movement strategy or like just someone's overall movement. So that's, I think, a really important part to understand is that the eyes are really important for survival and actually telling us like everything like about like what's happening around us. Okay. So that's one part that's really important to understand. The second point that's really important to understand is that vision itself or like the eyes themselves, they're actually attached to six different muscles. So each eye is actually attached to six ocular muscles, which also can be restricted if we don't move them well. So let's say you're just looking at a desk, uh, you're sitting on your desk the whole day looking at a screen. Your visual system also will be compromised. So maybe you will have a lack of just like basic eye muscle mobility, or maybe at a certain point, you will lose some of your peripheral vision over time by just not really using it. Okay, so the term, if you don't use it, you'll lose it, couldn't be further from the truth specifically for the visual system. So why, why like, how can the eyes then affect the the body's mobility or the body's flexibility. And a lot of that actually comes back to the eyes connection to the neck muscles. Okay. So if you actually look at some of the studies that have looked at the connection between the eyes and the neck, you will find that there is a significant correlation between specifically convergence. So like both eyes moving together as a team and stiffness in the neck, so like neck pain. And if you address some of these convergence issues that a lot of people have, you will oftentimes see that the neck musculature will like completely like melt away. Like all of that tension in the neck will completely melt away when they actually address some of these underlying visual issues. And now if you look at, again, things through a biomechanical lens, you will understand that if someone has a tight neck, that will affect the whole structure of the body. Okay. If someone has a tight neck, okay, someone is constantly in that shrugged and scared position, that will automatically affect the thoracic spine, the lumbar spine, the pelvis, and thus also our whole movement chain, our whole musculoskeletal system. Okay, so that is really important and interesting to understand that the eyes are deeply connected to our neck muscles. Our neck muscles are connected to our whole body. And also, like another point that is really important is that when you have a more threatened or a more anxious body position, that will also affect the autonomic nervous system. So like the sympathetic activity and the parasympathetic activity, which means that when we're constantly in that, you know, fight or flight state, that will affect our muscle tone and that will affect our mobility and like how well we're able to move. And that is also why when you address the visual system with a lot of people, you can see really crazy changes in their range of motion and in their overall movement and performance capabilities because one you can impact like how the body moves how the muscles are actually either on or off because obviously when you have that increased muscle tone so you're constantly in that fight or flight state that can actually like impact your performance 
your muscles can fatigue faster when you're constantly like in that tense state. Your um, your risk of injury might increase because you know you might be more extended. Like a lot of these little things that can happen when you're just more in that like fight or flight state constantly. And not, I'm not talking about that. This is a bad thing. Like when you're when you're performing your sport, you should have a slight elevation of muscle tone. Although I would claim that the best athletes are also the best relaxers. So they know exactly when to activate certain muscles and when to, you know, like relax certain muscles. So they're constantly in this perfect balance of, okay, like I'm actually like uh, putting tension in a specific muscle and at the same time I'm relaxing a certain muscle. But now if you're constantly in that like fight or flight state, you will not be able to actually have those skills. So as an athlete, that's going to be really important. So back to the topic. So with the visual system, what we can see are these connections between the eyes, the neck musculature, and then because of the neck, we can see also that effect on the whole um, movement chain. Okay, so that is also why you can see some really significant changes in someone's mobility, strength, overall movement when you actually address the eyes and here's the important part though it doesn't mean that when you're performing a 30 second vision drill that this will automatically get the job done okay like yes you will probably have some temporary effects of okay my neck feels a little bit looser it feels a little bit you know like like less tense but the actual important part is the training aspect of it of it okay so that is also why it's called neuro training it's not like called neuro magic where you just do one drill and all of a sudden like all of your problems vanish okay so it's really important to understand actually the training aspect of the visual system or of a lot of these like sensory input systems like they actually need training they also need progression like it's not that you know like you can just do the same drill all the time like you actually have to follow a logical progression model like it's the same as strength training you will not have let's say you want to train your biceps if you're just doing curls with 15 kilograms for three years you probably will not gain as much muscle as if you're actually like progressing with the load with the neural load that is actually needed to drive neuroplastic changes and actually improve overall vision and just overall eye function okay so that's going to be really important to understand so back to the point that i was making earlier about you know people thinking that what i'm preaching is like yeah you just do like two or three neuro drills and all of your problems vanish this is again not what i'm saying like all i'm saying is you need to view things not only through a biomechanical lens you also need to look at it through a neurological lens and the best combination is actually viewing things through a neural lens and a biomechanical lens. And if you really understand movement through these two different lenses, that's exactly where you can really make some profound impact in people's lives. Because I've worked with so many athletes, I've worked with so many people that have worked with amazing trainers that have all the knowledge in, you know, like biomechanics, but they don't really have a clue about neurology. So nobody has ever assessed their visual system or their vestibular system or their proprioceptive abilities or like their reflexes. Like nobody has ever addressed these areas. And these areas are actually the ones that in a lot of people are problematic. Okay. Some people, obviously they will have amazing results just working on movement, just working on biomechanics. But like I said, it's important to address both sides of the coin and that is also why in Neuro Training Institute, I always teach a really, really big understanding in biomechanics to all of the coaches and therapists that come to our courses. Because if you lack that biomechanical understanding, if you lack the understanding of actually the different body structures and the pelvis and the rib cage and the feet and, you know, like the shoulders and the neck, like you will not have the ability to actually like really max out your potential. And that is also my frustration in the neural field because like in the neural field, like I've taken a lot of courses in the neural field. And like, unfortunately, oftentimes in these courses, like 
the people don't really understand much about biomechanics. <laughs> just the, they're just the next thing. Like they know all the neural pathways, but then they don't really have a clue about movement. So I'm just trying to like fuse the two worlds together and actually like provide really good tools and, and, and practical assessments and drills that can actually help people in the long run. And again, it's the training that actually makes the long-term changes. I'm not saying that like, you can't have really fast improvements with neurotraining. Like I've seen really crazy improvements sometimes just within a few days of addressing things like the visual system or the vestibular system. But it, like usually, like usually it will take a certain period of time for the brain to actually adapt and actually to drive neuroplasticity. Okay, so that's that's something to to definitely keep in mind that this is a really important point um, that you need to understand when it comes to working brain-based on like when you're actually applying neural training with your clients or with your athletes.